In this video, we'll be covering two types of interface controls, checkboxes and touch toggles. Checkboxes are typically used as on or off switches. You might use them to determine whether or not something is visible or to alternate between two possible outcomes. Here, I'll show you how to do both. To begin, we'll need a developer's tooltip. Neos provides a few convenient templates for common interface elements such as checkboxes, buttons, and value sliders, and they can all be found within the Neos UI category. Here we have a basic checkbox that alternates between two states when it is pressed. If we take a look at the inspector panel for this checkbox, we can actually see the state field changing as we click on it. Let us expose the parameters of this checkbox component using the Logics tooltip. By creating a display for the state field, again using the secondary action button, we can see visually whether or not the box is checked on or off. Something you'll likely do a lot with checkboxes is trigger the visibility of other objects, so allow me to identify which properties control that. First, there is the active checkbox. Every object has this, and when it is turned off, the item behaves as if it does not exist. But there are situations where you might want to use a box to define a clickable area, but you don't want the box itself to be visible. That's when it's more useful to disable the mesh renderer instead. Notice how the object is no longer visible, but we're still able to interact with it. These properties are all on-off toggles that we can control with a checkbox. Just expose any desired objects or components, and the state of the checkbox can be plugged directly into the desired properties that consist of a Boolean data type. There are cases, however, where we might want to alternate between two possible outcomes, which may not be a Boolean. To demonstrate this, I'll use some text. Perhaps we want it to alternate between the words good and evil. To make this happen, we need an operator called conditional. The way this node works is that it will choose between two values based on whether something is true or false. We'll need two string inputs here, each with their respective labels. Remember that you can move your tooltip over inputs or outputs to get clues as to what they correspond to. Here, we see the input that'll be used on true, the input that'll be used on false, and the condition which decides which of these inputs is chosen. Many conditional nodes like this will change to match whatever data type that you plug into them. We can finish this setup by plugging our checkbox into the last input. We can preview our result by creating a display node. Now, if we want to affect this text over here, we need to expose the component that outputs this text. The text renderer component can be exposed with logics. In the inspector panel, we can see that the word text is shown here, and it can be changed with the virtual keyboard, so we know that this is what we want to affect. Let's just plug the conditional into the text field, and we end up with this result. Just know that any two values of the same data type can be alternated between using this method. With that out of the way, we should move on to touch toggles, which are basically the same as checkboxes, except that you can apply it to any object. I'll just make a box with the developer's tooltip, and assume that we want to turn this into a working button. Touch toggle is an actual component, so I'll find it in the Add Component dialog to get it in place. Check out what happens when I point my laser at the object and press the trigger button. The state checkbox alternates between on and off. 
This component can, of course, be exposed in logics, and it can be hooked up to drive anything that you want in your scene. Remember that you can always disable the mesh renderer to make it so that you can define a clickable area in your world. Sliders work exactly the same way as buttons and touch toggles. If you open up the properties of a slider, you'll notice some options here that let you define the minimum and maximum values, and when you adjust the slider, the value changes in the inspector. This value, which is a float, can be used to drive whatever you want. 